For years, fats have been demonized, and so it's quite understandable that people would be hesitant about adding more to their diet. However, fats are not to be feared. They're a macronutrient, which means we need them in relatively large quantities, and they are vital for optimal health. My name is Elle and I'm a registered dietitian specialising in sports nutrition and disordered eating. In this video, we're going to look at the importance of fats in our diet, break down the myths and look at how you can add more healthy fats into your diet. Fats found in food are mainly made up from triglycerides, which are made up of a unit of glycerol and three fatty acids. Each fatty acid is a chain of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Fats are classified based on their chemical structure, with saturated fats having all single bonds between carbon atoms and unsaturated fats having at least one double bond in their fatty acid chain. Saturated fats tend to be solid at room temperature with unsaturated fats usually being liquid. Fats are required to provide essential fatty acids, provide energy and are also necessary for the absorption of fat soluble vitamins A, D, E and K. Fats form the basis of cell membranes and are required for the production of certain hormones like estrogen, progesterone and other steroid hormones. We know that fats are really important, so how did we end up here fearing fats? Fats have been vilified for decades. As always, nutrition science has evolved a lot since then. So let's explore some of the myths around fat and whether they still stand true today. Number one, eating fat makes you gain fat. This was never true. No single food or food group can cause weight gain because weight gain occurs as a result of eating more energy than the body requires over time. Fat is the most energy dense nutrient with it providing nine kilocalories per gram, meaning that small amounts can provide a lot of energy in comparison to other foods. But this doesn't mean that it's bad or that it will automatically cause weight gain. Fats play an important role in satiety and can help you to feel fuller for longer, which would actually have the opposite effect. Number two, fats are unhealthy. Foods high in fat are not inherently bad for you, and a lot of research has suggested that quality may be more important than quantity in most cases. Due to the different structures, different fats have different effects on the body. You may be familiar with the terms good and bad fats, or healthy and unhealthy, and these refer to unsaturated and saturated fats respectively. Unsaturated fats can be further classified as monounsaturated, meaning that they contain one double bond in their structure, or polyunsaturated, meaning that they contain more than one double bond. These are known to be beneficial for our body. Monounsaturated fats are found in oils like olive and rapeseed oil, and in things like olives, avocados, nuts and seeds, and are thought to have the greatest health benefits out of all fats. Polyunsaturated fats are found in most vegetable oils, in nuts, seeds, and oily fish. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids are polyunsaturated fats, but they are also considered essential fatty acids because they cannot be made in the body and we must source them through food. Omega-3 fatty acids are known to play a vital role in our brain, hormonal, and immune health. Foods such as wild salmon and other oily fish, walnuts, flax seeds and chia seeds are all sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Whilst plant-based sources of omega-3 like flax seeds, chia seeds and walnuts are all high in omega-3 fatty acids, they contain a type known as alpha-linoleic acid or ALA, which must be converted to either EPA or DHA in the body in order to be utilised for its functions further than energy. However, our bodies are not greatly efficient at this, so only a small amount of EPA or DHA is actually gained throughout this conversion process. ALA is typically one of the most common omega-3 fatty acids in our diet, which is why it is encouraged to include oily fish in our diets twice per week, as these contain more bioavailable sources of omega-3, or to supplement if you're not a fan of oily fish or are plant-based. Saturated fats, which are usually found in animal products like meat, butter, and cheese and baked goods, have been blamed as the cause of heart disease for decades. This is because they can raise the total cholesterol in our blood. Cholesterol is a waxy substance that is required to make certain hormones, but high levels in the body can build up in the arteries and restrict blood flow, which increases the likelihood of cardiovascular related incidents like stroke. Like fats, cholesterol is often simplified into good and bad cholesterol. HDL cholesterol, which stands for high density lipoprotein, is considered our good cholesterol, with LDL cholesterol, which stands for low density lipoproteins, being bad. High levels of LDL cholesterol increase the risk of heart disease and stroke, as it can clog up arteries, which restricts blood flow to and from our heart. But HDL cholesterol helps to remove this bad cholesterol from the blood and takes it to the liver where it can be removed from the body. HDL cholesterol can therefore reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke. Unsaturated fats can reduce total cholesterol levels and specifically LDL cholesterol levels too, which is why it is encouraged to replace sources of saturated fat with unsaturated fats. 
However, more recent evidence has shown that the link between saturated fat and risk of heart disease is not as clear as we once thought. We now know that not all saturated fatty acids behave in the same way. For decades, full fat dairy has been something we've been told to avoid, with previous studies linking saturated fat intake and an increased risk of the development of certain diseases, specifically cardiovascular disease. However, research from studies over the past few years highlights that saturated fats from dairy sources are actually associated with lower risks of cardiovascular disease and may even have a preventative effect. No single food will automatically cause any disease, and it's important to remember that your diet as a whole is important when considering overall health and disease risk. Foods like full fat yogurt and cheese can certainly be included in a well-rounded diet. Other things can affect cholesterol levels too, like our fibre intake. Saturated fats are only one player amongst many. Trans fats are thought to have a negative effect on our cholesterol profile, more so than saturated fats. This is because they can lower HDL, or our good cholesterol levels, and increase LDL, or our bad cholesterol levels. Trans fats are mostly found in processed foods, as they are produced by hydrogenation, which is the process that turns liquid oils into a solid or spreadable fat. Trans fats are the only fat that we should aim to avoid wherever possible, and it's recommended that they provide no more than 2% of our total energy intake. Trans fats are mostly found in commercially produced pastries and cakes, in some margarines and fried foods like donuts or fries. Number four, low fat products are better for you. Of course, what is better or healthier for one person may be so different to what is better or healthier for another person. So it's really hard to give blanket advice, but low fat products do not necessarily equal healthier or better. When fat is removed from a product, we could be missing out on some beneficial fatty acids and nutrients like vitamins A, D, E, and K. Fat is also an integral part of foods from a texture and satiety point of view. Low fat products may contain additional additives and preservatives, as well as salt and sugar to help improve the taste and texture. This is not necessarily better or worse, it will depend on the individual. However, if you're choosing a low fat product because they're lower in calories, studies have shown that because low fat versions of food are not always as satisfying, you're more likely to use more of it than you would if you had the normal version, which kind of defeats the purpose. When following a low fat diet, it's much harder to get the benefits that unsaturated fats do provide us with. In fact, a PREDIMED study followed a group of individuals for an average of five years and found that those who followed a Mediterranean style diet supplemented with additional additional extra virgin olive oil or nuts significantly reduce the incidence of cardiovascular related disease in comparison to a low fat diet. It is recommended that if you're cutting down on your saturated fat intake that you replace saturated fats with unsaturated fats rather than cutting fat entirely out of your diet. Evidence has shown that when saturated fats are replaced with refined carbohydrates, LDL cholesterol levels and heart disease risk can actually increase. We also know that when we have too little fat in our diet, certain biological processes may not work as well. Consuming a low fat diet can cause irregular with menstruation in women and contribute to hypothalamic amenorrhea, which is the loss of a natural period due to an imbalance in energy and stress on the body, which could be caused by not eating enough or low intakes of fats or carbs. It has been shown that certain fatty acids play a role in fertility, with evidence showing that linoleic acid and omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid increasing the release of luteinizing hormone, which regulates the function of the ovaries in women and testes in men. We've explored the benefits of fats, so how can we include them in our diet? It is recommended that 20 to 30 percent of our overall energy intake comes from fats and saturated fat intake should not exceed 11 percent of our total energy intake. To incorporate more fats into your diet you could try adding things like nuts and seeds to porridge, yogurt or salads and stir fries. Nut butters, avocado, olive and rapeseed oil are also great sources of unsaturated fat. Aiming to include a source of fat at each meal is a great way to ensure that you're getting enough fats in your diet. Remember no single food or food group can cause weight gain or disease so all foods fit into a balanced diet. Aim to include unsaturated saturated sources of fat wherever possible and remember that low fat is not always the way to go. Of course, there are some situations where this may be recommended, so be sure to consult with your GP or healthcare professional if you're concerned about your cholesterol levels or your fat intake. As always, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.